Today, we're going to be completing Lesson 5, Digital Inputs. For this lesson, we'll be needing the Elego Mega 2560, a breadboard, a 5mm red LED, a 220 ohm resistor, two push switches, and seven M to M jumper wires. Let's take a look at the lesson plan before we get started. Okay, so the lesson objective is to use push buttons with digital inputs to turn an LED on and off. One switch will turn it on, the other will turn it off. The lesson also introduces push switches for the first time. When you press the button, it connects two contacts together so that electricity can flow through them. In this diagram, it shows that pins A and D are connected, as are pins B and C. Here's the wiring diagram. It looks like the D5 PWM, D8 PWM, D9 PWM, and ground pins are all used for this project. The D5 PWM provides power to the LED connecting through the resistor. The D8 PWM provides power to the off switch. The D9 PWM provides power to the on switch. And ground is connected to the negative power rail and multiple wires connect from that negative rail to connect to each component being used on the breadboard. Let's quickly dive into the code being used. The beginning three lines of the code itself define the three variables for the three pins that are used in this lesson. LED pin defines the output pin. Button A pin refers to the button closer to the LED. Button B pin refers to the button farther from the LED. So that would mean that the LED pin equals D5 PWM, the button A pin equals D9 PWM, and the button B pin equals uh, D8 PWM. Next up is the void setup function, which defines the LED pin as an output and the two buttons or switches as inputs. With this code, the lesson plan uses input pull-up, which means that the pin is to be used as an input, but if nothing else is connected to the input, it should be pulled up to high. In other words, the default value for the input is high, unless it is pulled low by the action of pressing the button. This is why the switches are connected to ground. When a switch is pressed, it connects the input pin to ground so that it is no longer high. With that in mind, we come to the loop function. The loop function is written so that when button A is pressed, the LED pin will be changed to high. And when button B is pressed, the LED pin will be changed to low. So effectively, when clicking button A, we will be turning on the LED pin, and when clicking button, uh, button B pin, we will be turning off the LED. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's build it. 